Hey YouTubers, what is going on? Thank you for stopping by. I hope this video finds you well. If you're new here, my name is JC and this is the Cure Redneck DIY channel where we do cooking and grilling on Tuesdays and DIY stuff on Fridays. Today, we're going to be adding cruise control to our new 2022 Ford Maverick. Uh, if you're not into DIY stuff, that's not a problem. Do me a favor, click on the title of the channel where you will find dedicated playlists to all of our recipes as well as drinks. One thing you're not going to find in this channel is misleading thumbnails or titles. Okay, so believe it or not, the basic XL and SLT 21-22 Ford Mavericks did not come equipped from factory with cruise control. However, the ECU or computer is equipped with the module and all we have to do to upgrade the cruise control is replace our steering wheel switches. There's a left and a right. I uh, paid $100 for these guys, but um, knowing that I got a discount on it, so it might be a couple of dollars more. Um, one is twenty-five dollars. The one on the right, the one on the left, was seventy-five dollars. Not a hundred percent sure why the discrepancy in price, but more than likely this one is a smart switch, meaning it is giving uh, pulses or has chips in it to give pulses to the computer into the system. Uh, we're also going to need a USB to OBD2 adapter. That one was twenty-one dollars from Amazon, and I will provide uh, part numbers and links for, to all of these on uh, on the blog. Uh, one thing I do want to disclose, this is not my idea, I did not invent this. Uh, this is publicly available information at the mavericktruckgroup.com. It's a forum uh, for Maverick owners. And uh, I will be basically following that procedure. So bear with me if I, you know, take a few stumbles here and there. I will be doing this uh, with you guys for the first time live. Uh, the only thing I'm going to make do different is that a lot of the videos we're using a camera to record the, the screen of the computer. I'm actually going to record the screen and try to show you a procedure that is a little bit simpler, easier to follow. So with that said, let's get going. Let's add cruise control to our 2022 Ford Maverick. I know that many people are going to be apprehensive about removing the steering wheel airbag, so I guess it is worth mentioning that there are aftermarket cruise control options available for the Ford Maverick. With that said, please know that the aftermarket unit does not interact with your dash, meaning that the set speed might be a little bit inaccurate. And that is because what the aftermarket cruise control does, it locks the engine at a desired RPM and releases it once you tap the brakes. By the way, you also get to add this ugly stick to the left side of your steering column. Not only that, but in my opinion, I think that the aftermarket option is more intrusive to the vehicle's electronics than the activation of the function already built into the system by Ford. Before we begin, I want to point out that aside from the USB to OBD2 interface, you're also going to need to download Forescan. This is an open source diagnostic software found at Forescan.org. I also want to mention that although there are several iOS versions of this software for downloads on the website, almost everyone that I know has had an issue with it. Most of the time it's not Forescan itself, but rather the Apple USB drivers for the OBD2 adapters. Very few are true 100% compliant with Apple devices. If you have access to a PC, I strongly recommend you use that instead. And know that it doesn't have to be nothing fancy. All you need is a basic Windows laptop. I'm not going to make this a Forescan video. In my opinion, there's a lot of resources out there, including the Forescan website. If you need additional information or support, I recommend a video titled Forescan 101 by Ricardo's Workshop. Okay, so after installing the software and verifying connectivity with your Ford Maverick, we can then proceed to the installation. The first thing we need to do is disconnect the battery. As a cost cutting measure, Ford couldn't give us two extra inches of battery cable. So after loosening the terminal and they're on pretty good, the best thing to do is to stuff something under it or better yet, use a large zip tie as I did here to keep the terminal away from the battery. I did both just in case. With the battery disconnected, let's go inside the vehicle. Put the key in the ignition and turn the top of the steering wheel to the nine o'clock position. Insert a small, thin, flat screwdriver into the 3 8 opening on the back of the steering wheel. 
almost directly behind the switches. Insert the screwdriver pointing up and then pry down to release the airbag clip. Then turn the steering wheel to the 3 o'clock position and repeat the process to release the other side. With the airbag loose, the first thing that we need to do is release the horn cable. That is a single cable with a wide terminal. It has a little ear on one side, it needs to be pressed in order to release it. We then need to pop the orange connectors on top of the airbag yellow terminals. Once you pry the orange tab away from the yellow terminal, you'll be able to release the terminal and remove the airbag. Next, we need to remove the steering wheel bezel or fascia holding the switches in place. To do this, slip four fingers onto the bezel and with your thumb push down while pulling up with the other fingers. You need to alternate between the left and the right until the top row of pins releases. As to the bottom, that proved to be a little bit more stubborn, but after giving the two small silver color hooks a little help, it came right out by applying upper pressure towards me in the direction of the steering column. Replacing the actual switches is no big deal. Two small door screws on each side and that is it. We can now go back to the Maverick and reverse every step we took five minutes ago. With the fascia in place and the switches connected, we need to plug the horn and the airbag connectors back. Then place the airbag in position and push down until it clicks into place. We can now reconnect the battery and proceed to programming. Two quick notes. The battery makes part once you connect it. That is quite normal. There is a fuel pump and other devices coming back online and that may cause a rush of current draw. Number two. I had no OBD2 errors by my friend down in Texas reported to me an airbag light after doing this procedure. We'll address that a little bit later. After connecting the USB adapter to your vehicle's port, we can fire four scan. We can then click on the connection icon at the lower left. For some reason, every time that I use this software, it gives me a baud rate error. Just click yes to optimize the connection and move forward. The software is then going to go module by module and collect data from all of them. And yes, there's at least a dozen computers in this vehicle. When done, it's gonna ask if you want to create a profile. This is 100% optional, but not a bad idea. So click yes to proceed. The first thing we're gonna do is go to the left menu and select the icon that looks like a chip. From there, we're going to select the second option labeled SCCM. This particular step is not needed, but I just want to verify that our new switches were found, or should I say indexed by the system. After clicking SCCM, click the play icon at the lower left, and as you can see, both the left and the right switches are now registered with the system. We can now click stop to exit. Click on the configuration tab at the top of the page. This time, we're gonna select SCCM as built. Click the play icon one more time. This time, you're gonna be prompted with a warning. Just click OK. Before we do anything, the first thing we're gonna do is click the Save All tab at the bottom. We're gonna save this file as OEM. We're then gonna to go to the second section and look for block ID 7240201. We need to change this line to read 1258 6820 3050. Don't worry about writing this down, it will be listed not only in the description but also on the blog. We're then going to hit write off, agree on the pop up, turn the key off, then on, and step one of three is now done. Next, click the configuration tab once again and look for the second ABS module. Click play and look for cruise control. As you can see here, it says none. Double click on it and a menu option will pop up from which we are going to select option number two, cruise control. This truck, as many that did not come from factory with cruise control, is not equipped with a front facing radar. 
that means we cannot use the adaptive cruise control option. As before, click right, and when prompt, turn the key off and on. Congrats, step number two is now complete. Click stop to disconnect, and then click on the configuration tab one more time. For the last step, we need to go into the body control module as build option. Agree to the warning and wait until all the options are fully loaded. Here, we're gonna look for sector 7260405. We're gonna change the third box in this sector to read 8872, but not before we make a backup copy of the OEM configuration. Click Save All and label this copy OEM as we did before. After changing the third box on this sector to 8872, click Write All, agree on the prompt, turn the key off and on, and you are done. Your Ford Maverick now has cruise control. You'll be able to see the active icon on the center of the dash. However, there's only one way to test this. Okay, let's address the issue with the airbag light after doing this procedure. As it turned out, and as it usually is, it was human error. The airbag connector has an orange clip on the back of it. The clip will not go into place unless the connector is properly seated onto the airbag. If the clip does not lock, it will trigger an airbag light. Before you jump off a bridge, please take the airbag back out and inspect the connections first. After resetting the TTC or trouble codes for the airbag, we had to resort to an old method of jumping the battery terminals after disconnecting the positive lead. Since Forescan, several other softwares, including a snap-on code reader, failed to successfully clear the code. Simply disconnect the positive battery terminal and find something to jump the positive and negative cables for about 15 to 20 minutes. Guys, thank you so much for watching. I truly appreciate it. And I hope you stay tuned. A lot more Fort Maverick content is coming your way. However, getting parts has been a little bit slow, but know that we are just getting started.